Welcome back to another episode of the Bison Trading Show, coming at you live from the Bison Trading Lab for another great week of live market analysis, where we break down all of the best charts. We show you what you need to do, the levels that you need to trade from, and how you can make profit off of those levels all week long. If you don't know, I'm half of the Bison Trading Show crew. I go by the name of Ty Trades Futures, and of course, I'm here with my main man, you know who it is, man. It's your boy D Guy, aka Pearl Financial. Man, I appreciate everyone, every single one of y'all for pulling up today. I hope y'all got y'all notepads and pens. We gonna be going over some really good things today. So, buck buckle up. Let's go. Big facts. So of course you know it's the start of a new week. I gotta bring you guys to that U.S. thirty chart which is the Dow Jones Industrial Average, pretty much a representation of 30 stocks that give a, a good indication as to what the overall stock market is doing as well as what the economy is doing. And it's something that we can also trade and make some money off of, which is always important to us. So since it's the beginning of a new week, actually, before I get into the analysis, I almost forgot. Let's go over the schedule for this week, Tuesday and Thursday. 9 30 p.m eastern standard time we will be here doing our live market analysis you know how we do you already tuned in so you know what's up and then of course on friday we have our live trading session where we actually take what we learned throughout the entire week we put it all together and we make profits last week i made a smooth 12 pips on a nice little scalp off of the uh non-farm payroll numbers we cut off a little bit early well you didn't get to see my boy d but he was tell him d man i definitely caught a couple couple pips i got in what did i take actually what did i take my trade on to be specific i think i was messing with bitcoin no matter of fact i said i didn't like bitcoin what did i trade oh i was trading ga mm -hmm. so i got a nice couple pips on there i got a smooth little 30 pips i got in and out nice little sell yep so you guys gotta tune in this friday and see what's good man yep and if you missed the stream from last friday it's still up there on the twitch website make sure you go check that out and support the guys so with all of that out the way let's actually get into this analysis so let's bring it out to the weekly chart we know it's the beginning of the week we got to look at it from a top-down perspective where we take things from the higher time frames and we move our way down to figure out first the overall trend we get that from the bigger time frames and then we work our way down to figure out exactly where we want to get in so looking at the looking at the market from the weekly chart one thing about the dow jones if we zoom out we can just see what happens we see that the dow jones has a historical pattern of going up even when it pulls back hard it always recovers and it always bounces back which is what we saw most recently in uh february march last year when the pandemic hit crazy historic time that we'll probably talk about for years on end but what i want to focus on from that time period is the all-time high that was made that level was made up here at around 29,500 somewhere around that area right now we finally broke past that level in november 2020 that's a good thing because that means the market is healthy again making higher highs and higher lows pushing its way to the upside but you know this is a breakout area right here so once we break out we always want to come back and retest that level that's the sign of a healthy uptrend once you break past the breakout area you always have to come back and test it again so that's what we saw right here on this first week from december 21st back in 2020 we came and we tested that level now what i want to point out to you guys is what just happened last week so this candle represents what happened uh the first week of february right that's last week now look at the low for this candle right here the low for this week if we follow it across follow that follow the crosshairs right boom are we surprised that it comes back to the all-time high not at all because in a healthy market that's what we should expect so now that we've seen the recess two times that gives us all the confirmation that we need that we should see higher prices at least for the next month or so that's a good sign for us especially if you're on the long side of the market so now that we know the overall trend is up let's break it down to the daily chart let's bring up our support and resistance levels let's stretch out the chart and let's see exactly where we want to get in on the daily chart we don't see anything that's really popping off at us so far we pretty much get a, a very similar view of what happened on the weekly so let's go ahead and break it down to the hourly chart and let's see what we got all right 
So first thing that pops off at the screen, of course, you see the highlighted circle. I put that there for us tonight so we could talk about that. That circle right there actually comes back to test the all time high that was made before what we saw. Actually, excuse me. It was made after the one that we saw from uh, February 2020. Now, that all time high level was uh, right over here from late January, right around thirty one thousand two hundred and fifty. That's our all time high. So to make sure that we remember that, let's go ahead and make that level green so that we never forget it. So we know throughout the market, anytime you break past a previous all time high, that level will absolutely be important later on in the future when prices come back to eventually test that level one more time. And that's what we're seeing right here in this highlighted circle. Once we broke above 31,250, not only did we just touch it right here, but we kind of hovered above it, stayed above it. When an uptrend is going on, that's a good positive sign that you love to see. You like seeing all time highs get broken or just any major support levels be broken. And you want to see prices stay above it, hold that level, hold that line and then continue to push up. And that's exactly what we have right here in this scenario. So that's a good thing. We have prices pushed down to 250. They pushed up. And now we're breaking out to new all time highs. So now we're up in the 31,400s and 500s. Preferably, we can move higher by the end of the month. And uh, I, I don't think it would be too crazy to say that by the end of February, we might see 32,000 on the Dow Jones, which is crazy to say because in 2013, it was just crossing, you know, uh, just crossing 20,000. So it's a crazy move and something that we need to keep our eyes on and be a part of. Like I said earlier, this is historic. And we need to pay attention to what's going on. So, of course, because we're at the all time highs, we don't want to go long right here. That's bad risk management. We never want to go long at the highs. We want to wait for some type of pullback. So we need to look to the left and kind of figure out what areas of resistance we can look towards that can act as support now that prices are coming back down into them. So, of course, the first level that pops out is this thirty one thousand four hundred level. That's a little bit close to where we're at right now. So I would say that that level is just a tad bit risky. We know that the Dow, well, if you don't know, the Dow Jones is actually very volatile. A uh, 400 point move on the Dow Jones, that's a normal day. So keep that in mind when you're trading this pair. It could come all the way back down to 31,250. In my opinion, that right there could probably be the best level because for one, it's a previous all time high. It gives the market enough room to let the sellers get their rocks off. And I think a lot of people could find value at that thirty one thousand two hundred and fifty level. So best case scenario, that's what we're looking for. Um, I would say if we move further up, we could definitely find some levels up here. I see this level right here at thirty one thousand three hundred and thirty. That's a pretty good level. We see that we had a top over here before from February 7th, another top on February 8th. So for two days in a row, it failed to break past that level. And notice on the way down, these two wicks actually wicked off of it. So what we want to do right now, we want to go ahead and chart that level up. So let's put a line right here. Let's turn it purple. It's not an all time high, so it just gets the regular colors. But this level right here, in my opinion, could be the sweet spot for Anybody that feels like this price is too much of a stretch to wait for and this price is too close to be comfortable for us to take long trades. So let's kind of settle in the middle right here at 31,300. If we see prices pull back to around those levels, we want to see that level get respected. And once we see higher highs and higher lows bouncing off of there, feel free to go long and try and take prices back up to, uh, I would say 31,500. Right now, that's the highest that the market has ever been. But overnight, it's probably not. Uh, it's, it probably wouldn't surprise me if prices move higher. But right now, that's the level we want to look for. Look for a level at thirty one thousand three hundred. Take it up to thirty one thousand five hundred. That's the move that we'll be trying to play off of all week. And we'll see how that holds up. So uh, for me, that's my analysis for US 30. Now, let's pass it over to D and let's get his opinion on it. All right, so um, we can go ahead and go to our favorite time frame, which is our highest time frame. We don't have to really go to the monthly. We can just go right to the weekly um, and just kind of get in summary, just kind of what Tiberius said. You know, you just want to look at the higher time frames just to get your overall direction. You need to get this first because if not, you'll be battling the whole time on lower time frames 
on which direction to go. So pull up the moving averages for me. All right, and you guys understand how I use this tool or utilize this moving average tool, which is that if the 20 is over the 50, we know that the buyers are in control. Um, so pretty much we see that it has a tendency of going up. It makes a higher high, then it drops down. Then it does another higher high again, makes its little, it looks like it does like an ascending, uh, a, an ease, a three ascending formation, which it forms like three peaks. And on the last peak, it looks like it drops. So it looks like it has a tendency of doing that. So um, maybe we can drop down on the daily. And maybe if we can see if any peaks are really sticking out. Um, no, but I just like Tiberius said, unhide the move, uh, the signals. Let's really look at that uh, area where the market broke past the mo uh, overall high. Notice how when it broke out of it, it had to come back down to retest it. So that's after what we have to understand that any time that the market breaks an area, it has to come down and retest it. It's almost like a, are you sure? It's like a double check question where like, you know, if you ever on a computer and you exit out of Windows, it says, are you sure you want to exit out the window? It's like one of those case scenarios. So if you always keep that in mind, you know that if an overall high gets broken, you you can definitely be sure to wait for the retest. But there are some cases where the retest doesn't happen. But let's continue. Um, It broke the, um, the, previ uh, the, the last previous high is high. It retested it and it has a strong movement up. So the buyers are in control. So for me, moving down on the lower time frames, I would have to just continue looking for buys. And drop to the four hour, excuse me. All right, so we have a big, huge move up, which is like a high. We made another high, a high. So now we know that since it's making a higher high, we gotta wait for that dip before we hop in. So. Right now, we're, we're going to be looking for the area of 31,400 area to possibly be get retested again to get a good confirmation that the market is going to continue up because we're pretty much using the same formula that we did previously when the market broke its last highest high uh, in history. So it just broke this highest high. It retested it at the circle. It now created a new higher high. And now hopefully um, if we can get a retest, another retest at that circle, possibly we kinda, could have gotten a retest. Drop down to like two hour or hour. Let's zoom in a little bit. So yeah, I think possibly we could have gotten that retest because it also came down and touched the 20 moving average. Um, this pair tends to do that, maybe not the 50 all, uh, so much, but definitely the 20. Um, it came down, hit it right off of the wick. So I think right now um, we just want to kind of stay very close to those round numbers, the 31,400, the 31,450, the 31,425. So we want to keep those key levels in mind. Um, so... Yeah, 31,400. Drop down to like the five minute. I want to see how high we are or how, how low we are. Okay. So 31,400 is that, that okay. All right. So I definitely feel like um, since it made that huge pull like that, um, I, the buyers are still in control. Um, I think that since it just came down and hit, the 20 moving average, I think we're going to need the break of that 20 moving average. So sellers, if you guys can get the break of this 20 moving average and this uh, key level 31,450, if you can get a break of that where that lines up with an high over to the left, yep, that little high right there, that's, that is actually being currently being broken right now. So actually that'll be kind of like two or three confirmations in one, that high level we're getting the 31,450 level being broken, and we have the 20 moving average being broken. So um, we can definitely for sure say uh, the sellers are gonna try to push this down to set the buyers up. So sellers, this could be your chance uh, right now for your three confirmations. Buyers, like I said, we wanna wait for the market to come down to either hit our 31,400 for the very best entry, 
um, 31, 4, uh, 25. Um, so the quarter level. So yes, um, I would I would stay more on the buyer side for me. I would wait for the market to come back down as close to 31, 400, close as possible. Actually, throw a Fibonacci on it. Go to the like the 15 minute and throw a Fibonacci on it. So since we're going up, we're going from low to high. So, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, that industry level, I mean, that 61 lines up perfectly with the uh, 31,400 level pretty much. So, you know. Right now, probably the sellers are probably be the best side. I wouldn't really take that unless, you know, I'm just trying to see and trying to get some money, some real quick pips. But I believe right now I would be on the side of the buyers, sellers. This could be your chance to set me up to do my, my buy. So I would wait for the market to come down to the 61 level and that would be my green light. All right. So there you have it, people. That right there is the US 30, a.k.a. the Dow Jones. We should see some movement on that later on throughout the week. We'll keep you tuned. Uh, make sure you tap in again on Thursday. Going to have a couple of updates throughout the week. to let you know how that pair is moving. So, of course, let's move on to our second pair, which you've been following the show a long time. You already know. Moving over to that dollar, 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 dollar Swiss. That's facts. I'm going to start calling you Ty Swiss from now on. <laughs> you should <laughs> after that trade I took today. <laughs> you definitely got to put the people on, bro. How you ate up the market today? I got you. So first things first, in order to understand the whole dynamics of that trade, we need to understand the overall market trend. So let's pull it out to the weekly chart and let's see what this thing has been doing over the past history. Now we can see that ever since May of 2019, prices have been in a downtrend just unimaginably it's a crazy downtrend. It came from a high of a dollar and two cents all the way to a low of 88 cents. So that's really something serious in that amount of time. And as we see, we just had lower lows and lower highs, lower lows and lower highs continuously on the way down. Now, what stands out to me and what's important, especially for the trade that I just took today, is this breakout level right here. Notice how the trend was moving. It was moving down, moving down. And then eventually it came into this area around August of 2020, where we had a bottom at 90 cents and we had a top at 92 cents. And we pretty much just traded within that range for about a good two months. Well, actually more than that from uh, August to November, that's three months, three whole months. That's a long time. And we know that the longer a consolidation period lasts, the bigger the move will be when prices actually break out of it. So when prices broke out, we should not be surprised to see this huge of a candle all the way down, just continuing to push prices lower. And then, like we told you guys on the US 30, whenever we break out past a major consolidation or breakout level, we always want to see the market come back to test that. That's the sign of a healthy market. So this is the same kind of theory that we use on the downside would just flip everything around so in this scenario the breakout level was around uh 90 cents so we see prices go down over the next couple of weeks and then they pull back up last week and look what they touched they touched that same breakout area and then they made their way back down now we need to see that on a daily chart because the weekly chart just doesn't really give it justice now let's pull up our uh our signals let's pull up our support and resistance levels now, notice how we have this zone right here stretching all the way across. This yellow zone marks the bottom of that previous consolidation zone from August that I was talking about. Now, let's zoom in right here. Notice how prices since January 6th, the beginning of the year, they pretty much were moving higher. We had an inverse head and shoulders that finally broke to the upside and had prices push higher. So if you was long down there, you probably made some good money. But overall, for the, the bigger picture, the market was still short. All the market was really doing was coming back to test that 90 level. And that's where we saw the false breakout. And this is kind of what led to the trade that I took today. Because once prices broke above 90 on Friday, I was like, wow, okay, the bulls are really stepping up here. But see, here's the thing in the seller's market. 
the bulls are always going to have bullish retracements that go against the overall downtrend but the question is how long can the bulls last because the reason downtrends exist is because buyers run out of steam at certain points and the sellers step back in and push the markets down because they have more uh I guess they have more power in the market than the buyers during that specific period. And that's what we're seeing right now. So even though the buyers broke past that 90 level, they failed to maintain it. You remember how on US 30, when prices broke past the all time high, they stayed above it and they held above it. That's what you want to see if you want confirmation to the buying side. But when you see a level get broken through with strong momentum and then you see the sellers push it right back down through that level again, that right there is a false breakout and false breakouts can lead to some of the biggest moves in the market. And this is why, for one, you have a whole lot of people piling into the buying side thinking that prices broke 90 cents. So now the market is in an uptrend now. So it's a whole lot of orders up there at that level. So imagine where they have their stops. They have their stops, probably majority of traders around that 90, that 90 cents level. So if 90 cents gets broken, all of those stops are getting ran through and then you'll just have a cascade of selling that pushes the market down tremendously which is what we see right here notice how the first day after prices broke past that 90 level the next day after what did they do they had a bearish engulfing candle that completely nullified and invalidated the move that the buyers did so basically that's like you coming to class thinking that you're going to get an A on the test and the teacher was like, oh, no, I know you were cheating. I'm not even going to let you take the test. <laughs> you had all that momentum going into it thinking you were getting an A and then you got rejected right again. and was like, oh, no, not this time. That's what happened in the market. And uh, anytime you see a bearish engulfing in a downtrend that corresponds with a key level of resistance, that's what you want to look for for the short trade. And that's what I was able to do on the trade that I took today. I saw that prices were kind of hovering around that 90 cents level. I waited for prices to come back and test it. They didn't come all the way back to test 90 cents. They actually kind of turned around at 89.88. I was lucky to be kind of having my eyes on the market at the right time, right place. I saw that prices were kind of reversing back. So what I did was I went short at 89.88. So let's pull it down to an hourly chart so we can actually get an even better view of this thing. Right. So we can see how strong that downtrend was. So I was able to get in somewhere around these levels. I was expecting prices to come back and test 90. But sometimes in the market, one thing I will say, don't be so reliant on the levels. You have to be reliant on your eyes. Sometimes the market is not going to have enough strength, especially if the other side is strong enough. It's not going to have enough strength to get back to that whole number level. You have to take what you can get. And that's why I went short at this consolidation area, because I'm like, in my head, on the daily, I saw the same thing that, that I just showed you, that bearish engulfing. So I'm like, man, I know the overall trend is down. I have to take this trade. It lines up with everything that I know. So I entered the short 89.88, put my profit, excuse me, put my stop loss right below the this previous high right here. So about six pips below at 90, uh, 90.13. If prices break past that level, nobody in their right mind should be in the short trade still because at that point it's proven to us that the move is invalidated that's what you want to look for when you're placing your stops on the chart and my take profit all i did was look for the most recent level that was playing the most important role over the past historical time now on our past streams i mean for the past like two months we've been talking about this 89 20 level forever We've been saying how whenever prices got up to that level, they could never break through, never break through. And that went on for an entire two months, eight weeks straight. Not even once did prices wick above that level. They went straight to 8920 and reversed immediately. So we know that that level is strong. It had about 13 different touches. So when it finally broke through, I'm like, OK, once resistance gets broken through, we know that if prices ever come back down to that point, that same level will now become support. So I'm saying in my head, if prices have made a bearish engulf and I know the downtrend is going to be strong. So where are they going to possibly stop? Well, if that's the previous level that was important before, that's what I aim for. And as we can see, prices just cascaded down, made lower lows and lower highs until they got to that point. And uh, I was able to get out of the trade at around, I think, 89.20. Yep. So 89.24 right here. 
went short at 89.88. It's a good move right there, about uh, 64 pips. Very impressive. That's what we like to bring to the show for you guys. You know, we, we call out these moves on the stream, and we hope you guys pay attention because this is what we do right here. It's all about taking high-quality trades. So overall, I mean, if you look at the bearish engulfing, we should expect prices to continue. Overall, trend is down. We had major selling pressure. But if you want to short right now, I will, I will have to advise against that. We never want to short when prices are near their lows, at least for the day. Right now, 89.25 is the lowest prices of today. So we want to wait for a smooth little pullback. So, of course, we want to look for our next level right here, the 89.50. Notice how that lines up with a previous area that used to be support right here on this one wick. So we should not be surprised to see prices come back up and test that level. So overall, we're looking, I'm looking for the short. Uh, prices come back to 89.50, respect that level. We see lower lows and lower highs. Let's feel free to take the short trade and try and take it back down. I would say, of course, first level is 89.20. You can get you a smooth 30 pips out of that. But if you're a longer term trader and you wanna hold it for a longer time period, definitely look for this 88.50 level. I really want to tell you guys to hold out for this 8766, but I can't do it. The reason I say that because let's hide these uh let's hide these levels real quick. Anytime you see a blocky consolidation period on the chart, you are out of your mind if you think that prices are just going to run right through it. The reason that these prices were back and forth back and forth during this time period is because it was a battle between the buyers and the sellers. Neither side could determine who was going to push the market. So they just went back and forth, back and forth. So when you get back into that same uh, that same price area, you can't expect prices to just run through it. It has too much history to just get ran through. So if you're looking for a trade, maybe potentially take it all the way back down to the, the bottom of the consolidation period, which is we bring back the support and resistance 8850. So overall, that's what we're looking for throughout the week. That's what uh I hope you guys can learn from. And let's pass it over to D and let's get his analysis on good old, good old dollar Swiss. Man, <clears throat> ever since you've been tracking this, ever since our collegiate years, I would have to still follow suit and still go short and respect those levels that you said, which was the 90 cents level and the 90 50 those two levels right there, the market, and like you said, it didn't even come to 90, uh, 90, 50. It only came to like 88, uh, 89 or something like that, and then flipped around immediately, right? Yep. So I would definitely try to have to stay on that side. So let's just take it to the weekly really quick. On how the moving averages. Yeah, just right off of this weekly you know, what pops off right off is that these wicks hit the moving average smoothly and it did it exactly the way it has done in previous times to let you know that is how this pair moves. It goes up to the 20 moving average. Excuse me, I've been burping a lot. The 20 moving average and then it turns right around. So since we got that consolidation up, we got that pull right up to the 20 moving average, and now we're going to head right on down. So like Tiberius said, we don't want to jump immediately in because just right off the eye of it, it looks like the prices are kind of low right now. So let's just drop to the daily, and then we're going to eventually get down to the five minutes so we can see exactly how, how low we are, but let's just gradually get down there. So like we said, ever since it came, ever since it broke from 92 um, 93 area and broke all the way down under 90 cents. It consolidated around around the 88 and then it popped back up. So for me, I would respect that 90 90s uh, cents level and wanted to get it as closest to 90 cents level as possible. I probably won't get it 90 flat. So I'll probably either do the 89, 900. I'm, I'm sorry, 80, um, 89, 89, 800. 89,500, 89,250, or wherever, 200. So I would kind of stay on those sides, but I think the round numbers might be a little bit better. So I would just kind of stay on the 8980 level. So, um, yeah, so that's, let me see if there's anything else. So let's drop down to the four hour. 
Okay. So, you know, the um, 20 moving average is above the 50. That just in this little time frame shows that the buy, the according to the moving average, the buyers are supposed to be in control. So um, drop down to the five minute. I want to see how low prices uh, are exactly because, um, yeah, if we're going to stick to our model, buy low, sell high, um, we as sellers, we would have to hold off right now. Um, but, you know, there's some cases where, you know, it may not have enough momentum to even come back up to a certain level. So um, maybe not as far as 80. So maybe if we can get it to come like right below those moving averages as they cross. So like the 89, 250. If we can get like that, that level right there, because that line, that it lines up with a cross. As you move it over, it lines up with some lows, and it even lines up with some highs. So um, that's a good point, to do, Ali. So I think I would probably put it zone. I don't like, I, like I said in previous uh, streams, I never want to say point out a particular price because in forex, there's actually a group of prices you can actually get into instead of just that one price and still be profitable. So I I feel like the top of the box should probably be 89 to 50. And then the bottom of the box should probably be like, um, pull, bring the mouse down just a little bit, right? No, come up a little bit, come up slow. Maybe the 220, 250 to 220. So if we can get, actually put a box over that, unhide the moving averages. I mean, not moving averages, uh, unhide your signals. You didn't have none. So put a box over the area of the top of the box being at 89, 250 and the bottom of the box, um, 89, 250. Uh, 20, I said. Yep. I'm trying to figure out what happened to my indicators. When I yeah, pressed that just, <laughs> they that not even there. I'm kind of concerned. Yeah, you had that joint up there for a while. I hope not. But um, Oh, there they go. We just zoomed in for her. Okay, so go to the 15 minute. Let's make you feel a little bit better. <laughs> there we go. All right. So, yeah, um, you know, I just want to be patient because I'm going to be on the side of the seller. So I'm going to try to buy as high as I possibly can. Now that I'm looking at the 15 minute, maybe that's possible. Um, I just feel like maybe that could be a little bit too easy. So maybe um, we're just looking for a nice pull up. So I'm going to end that with there. So I want to get as high as I possibly can. Um, and probably, I think maybe, you know what I'm really thinking, bro? I'm kind of thinking like on some, since it kind of, if it respects this level where it's at right now, that maybe it's going to do like a double top type of thing. I mean, I'm sorry, not a double top, a double bottom type of thing. And then once it does that double bottom, then it's going to go all the way up and like retouch the 89.50 or like close up there where that wick is, right? That red wick and then come back down. <laughs> like, I just feel like yeah. for some reason, I, I feel like it could possibly like do a little tricky trick right there. Yeah, so, I agree. Um, So I'm just going to leave you guys with this. Um, buyers uh you guys please push the market up and you'll be fooled to be a buyer on this side anyway because like tiberius said it's been selling for a very long time so you haven't been listening to any of our streams so buyers you can do whatever you want sellers um i like we want to be patient so like i the, like the, the theory i just had you know i just it's just a theory i don't know if that could happen but i've seen that happen in cases where you think it's going to go straight down but it comes down halfway come all the way back up to the top and then come all the way back down so um we want to be as patient as possible uh yes so, yes. so um 89.50 we're gonna stick with that and and uh stand on that 
8950 or like as close to 8950s, but maybe that wick right there. That's what we're gonna kind of wait for, and we're gonna stand on that, and that that's it. That's it. All right, y'all, you got it right there, 8950. That's the level that we're playing off of for the rest of the week. So keep that in mind. Let's make some good trades. Like D said, let's be patient. It's the greatest gift that you can give yourself in the market. So with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to D. It's actually been a lot of things going on in the crypto market. And I feel like that's something that D can really break down with you guys. So let's pass it over to him and see what he has to say. All right, guys. So I know everyone, I want to bring everyone's attention because it could work out for a lot of people if we bring everyone's attention. So I want everyone's attention on Dogecoin. Ask your mama, do they know about Dogecoin? Tell you, the auntie, do they know about Dogecoin? But Dogecoin has literally just appeared last year, June or July 1st, out of just nowhere. Like, it just came and it just started. So it's just not even a year old yet. So this cryptocurrency definitely has a lot of potential. And I thought maybe like Litecoin or something like that could probably possibly have more potential. Um, you know, the next runner up under Bitcoin, then Dogecoin. No one knows. I think it's it's pronounced Dogecoin or something. Do Dogecoin. So um, let's actually look at it on the month on the monthly really quickly. Because like I told you before, it's not even a year old, so it's only gonna have only a couple of wicks. I mean, a couple of candles. So let's hide. So yeah, right here, this has only been, this has first started in July 1st, 2020, is when this first even came about. Somehow something happened around December time, who even knows where it even came from, but from December, we've got a huge, huge, big bullish engulfing candle and the only thing that um, got me worried about this candle is it pushed up so high, but look where it closed down. Like it closed down all the way down here, which means it had all the, the all this space here. It pulled, it came up and pulled all the way down. So this wick right here ate up a lot of people who, when the market came up and you seen it came up and everyone hopped in for the buy and it started pushing down. It literally stopped out a whole lot of people. And I know it actually probably made a couple people frustrated. I know it probably made me frustrated, but cryptocurrency is a very volatile pair. Um, it's one of those things you have to be kind of very careful on because it's still kind of a new market. You don't want to treat it other you don't want to treat it like anything other than what it is. You want you don't want to trip treat crypto and trying to cr trade crypto like stock. Stock is, is the thing that you buy and hold for the long term. Cryptocurrency is more on the short term, like Forex. You can win on both sides type of market where you may not use the same pointers as using for stock or for Forex. So it's just a little bit different. So let's just look at um, look at the price where it's at. It's literally not. It's just it's actually just got to five, six cents. It's not even worth 10 cents yet. So this has such a lot of potential. Let's drop down to weekly. Um, we got a big, huge. I think this is when everyone began to uh, talk about it. Um, this is actually when things this was when the AMC thing happened and all those things happened. So I think this is when this happened. So anything that goes up must come down. And like we said, anything that comes down or is broken a previous uh, area which was this high right here it possibly has to come back down to that area or for a retest before it continues back up but not in all cases but let's break this down and really analyze this because this is very new and and, and it has i feel like emotions can really paint the picture of this cryptocurrency just because it's so new i think a lot of the beginning actions is going to be be based primarily on emotions because it's not even really big yet like a bitcoin it's not worth you know forty eight thousand dollars but that'll be the next thing we'll, we'll we'll talk about next so um we got the big push up here um and it looked like here we got the we got a break of that high here 
once we got the broke of that high here, it looks like the next candle that we have here is forming exactly on the last high area that it formed. So let me unhide the moving at my um my signals. Cause I have a couple areas here. So the last high area of this uh the last high area or the overall high area um was I think this wick up here was this the 89 or no 85 okay so these two numbers that I have here which was like I think yesterday's high or today's high and low so we're gonna actually only talk about the overall high and the overall low so um let me sort of move this out of the way because this wouldn't be using this for later as well Um, so pretty much we got a strong buy trend. So pretty much you can just know from our monthly, weekly, and daily that the buyers are still in control. That um, we should be looking for buys uh, in the in the future. But we need to take note that since it made such an overall high, I think when was this? February seventh was today's day. Today is the ninth. So two days ago, it made an overall high. So I think. Now we're coming down in retracement mode right now, and we're coming down to the retest area where we want to be at. So let's drop down to the two hour and kind of like see where would some be good potential areas to hop in at. Cryptocurrency, um, like if you do it through the MetaTrader way, you'll be able to, I don't know, I, you don't have Dogecoin on MetaTrader, but I think you can only do it in Robinhood. And I, I don't think you can do it where, like, you can make money on both sides, like, hop in for a buy and hop in for a sell. You can only hop in for a buy. So um, we'll speak as if you can make both sides. So sellers, I think ever since this overall high here, we knew that every time it came up into the 80s, it didn't want no no parts of the 80, eight, uh, 8 cents. Every time it got to 8 cents, it said, nobody, we want nothing to do with that. Ever since it got up here and started making lower highs and lower lows. That's our first lower high and lower low. Then we have our next lower, lower high and lower low. Notice how this, this wick that came all the way down here, where does that line up with? That literally lines up with a high which was formed way back over here last, uh, actually, in the beginning of the year in January. It literally lines right up with the high, um, with these high wicks right here where the market struggled. So when this was this, uh, this was once the ceiling, and this is now became the floor. So this area right here would be called an area, area duality. We didn't said that word a thousand times. When we say area a duality, which means one, when it once was a ceiling, it's now standing on top of the floor we can begin to now continue to look in its corrected direction, which means the overall direction, which is the buy. Since it made this overall high, I feel like since it came down, retested this last high, these last high areas where the uh, market struggled or couldn't break past, retested it. Now we should be looking for the market to continue up. Um, so let's drop down to the hour. Um, so pretty much what I have these zone, these red zones here are pretty much a zones to let me know anytime it gets close to those zones, I'm going to sell. And if, if I get any closer to the green zones, I'm going to buy. So if I know if it comes up to this first red zone right here, if it rejects at this red zone, I know that the market's going to come back down. But if it breaks this red zone and breaks this i call this my warning zone because these lows down here lined up with this high this was the first very overall high before all of this was even formed this was the first overall high the market is actually gonna i been let me slow down this was once the ceiling and it now became the floor this is an area of duality where the market came down to it came down but it broke down past there so now that it was once the floor, it broke through it. If we can look for it to become the ceiling and reject at this area, this will let us know another area to begin to sell. But if it breaks out of this, we have to still remember that every time it gets to 80, 80 cents, or I'm sorry, not 80 cents, 8 cents, the market cannot break through it. But now that it has gotten its second time down here for a double bottom, these double bottoms line up with this high. 
this could probably be the momentum the market needed or the running start the market needed to possibly come up here to try to battle and break the area of eight cents. Once it breaks the area of eight cents, I think we can definitely get the market to come up to 10 cents and finally make it one whole number. Wait, not like a whole number, but make it like a 10, like it's worth 10 cents now. Like these are worth pennies. This is now worth a 10th spot on, on the chart. So um, let me see, is there anything else I want to say? Um, actually, a good, me and a good friend of mine, we've been watching this, and I think he's been using it on the Robin Hood, so he hasn't been able to do, like, press the sell button and be on the side of the sellers. He was only been able to buy. So, like I told her, I'm not a licensed uh, financial advisor to give any advice. I can only give you and learn the chart and give you my opinion. And I told him that the, at the, around the $0.08 cents area, you want to look around to sell. But when he was sitting at the eight cents, I told him that if it comes down here and breaks its last high down here at the 65, and that was the those numbers that I had written out right here. I think it, that the day of the day we were talking about it, this was the actual low. So I told him if it comes down and breaks this actual low over here, that the market is going to go all the way back down probably down to like two cents or three cents or something like that but being being that we've been having ellen musk the owner of tesla to kind of back this and say this is the next big, biggest cryptocurrency other than bitcoin this could actually start to begin to take off and i don't know if you guys kind of seen some notes this is kind of related but apple is, is is in the plans or the works to be purchasing like 150 million dollars or billion dollars worth of bitcoin so we can be definitely looking for the crypto world to possibly be, be taking off this year. Um, let me drop down to the five minute and see exactly how low we are. So I feel like since we are playing around in our buy zone down here, if we can get price to come back down um, to like the 68, uh, I'm sorry, six cents. If we can get it to come down to like six cents again, that'll probably be the best time to happen because uh, ever since it came down and made the low at uh, the low six cents being almost five cents, I think, um, it turned around. So um, ever since then, it's been making higher highs and then it just kind of consolidated in the zone. So um, I just feel like price should be making its way up. So. I know I said a lot of good things, Tiberius, man. I, again, tell me what you're thinking, boss. All right. So let's let's uh, let's bring it up to the hourly chart. Let's start there. The hourly. All right. So as D told you, we've been making lower lows and lower highs, pushing down into this zone that we have down here at around what's the what's the bottom price level for that green that smaller green zone that you have where prices are now what's that price you said it was six cents right Somewhere yeah because I don't, I don't i don't know what's what's before, like what's after that so it's just six cents like a six seven so 0.67 i think as long as prices can stay above that level we're still in the uptrend you know we see that the 65 moving average below is providing an area that could potentially be lower support but as we can see that level that 65 uh moving average actually got hit on that one wick that pushed down and touched it so that's telling us the retest has already occurred now in some certain situations there could be instances where that level comes back and gets re and gets uh retested a second time so we can always keep that in the question but as long as prices stay above the green zone at that now at around six seven we should be good remember uh oh yo you stopped sharing the uh you stopped sharing the screen i stopped sharing my screen yeah hold up hold up hold up sorry guys what's going on hold on guys That's crazy. I just stopped sharing nowhere. My fault, bro. 
So as long as we get prices to come back down to that six, seven level, we should be good because overall we are still in the uptrend. So if anything, this is actually might be a, a pretty good area to go long from, because if we follow it over to the left, we can see that prices around the eighth, they actually held up and acted as support at the purple level right below that, uh, right below the green zone before. So overall, if we look at this pair, we know that the trend is up. All we're doing as buyers is looking for the best areas for us to go long on this pair. Now, one thing I wanted to kind of touch on what D said before is that you have to be aware of what you're trading. Dogecoin is for the people to make money, meaning that you get in, you get your money, you take your profits and you hop out and you wait for the next position or you wait for the next move somewhere else in the market. Excuse me real quick. Don't get confused with Dogecoin and let your emotions get the best of you, because what we want to remember is what type of asset this is. This is a cryptocurrency that's just starting out. It started out in July of last year, so it's fairly new from a fundamental valuation perspective. Dogecoin has no purpose. It has no value. The only value it has is to put money in our pockets. This is not something that we want to hold like long term and be like, you know what? This is my lifetime investment. This is what I'm going to do. If you want to, that's your prerogative. But I, I have to highly advise against it. We want to be in Dogecoin. We want to get our money and then we want to get out and look for better plays. So always keep that in mind with Dogecoin. When you start making gains on Dogecoin, don't let your emotions get the best of you and make you say, you know what? I'm going to keep holding it and keep holding it. It's going to a dollar or something. Yes. Yeah, so let me piggyback right off of that very quickly. Yeah, like, so this is something, this is a cryptocurrency, like he just said, you will hop in, you hop out, you take your money. Do not confuse this and try to trade this like another financial instrument. This is not like stock. This is not the best thing to hold on for the long term right now until higher highs and bigger attention gets to this. But for right now, you just need to get your gains, whatever you make for the day. You hop in, you hop out, and call it. Go my head, bro. I had to get that off my chest really quick. Facts. And overall, that's what we want to kind of drill down to you guys. So overall, to wrap everything up, we want to go long if prices can stay above the green zone. I think I would need confirmation above the next uh <laughs> above the next I would say light purple area around 70 cents. Once it breaks that and we see a higher low, you're all good, you're all clear to take it back up to that 80 cents level. Now, if you're trying to take it back up further past that, I don't know if I could tell you to do that because we got to trade what we see on the chart. If that's the all-time high then it would be crazy for us to hold it past that point thinking that we could get more at that instance and in that scenario that would just be greed on our part now it's hard to kind of fight that but that's why we want to come on here and give you a warning beforehand so when you get up to that point take your profits and be happy with it wait for the next move so overall dogecoin we're looking for the loans need prices to stay above 60.60.067 60, very important and we should be good keep your head level Stay right in this market, and you'll have the opportunity to make some really good money with Dogecoin. Absolutely, absolutely. So, I think for the most part, uh, as far as the strategy, I feel like Dogecoin is like an in and out type of scalping strategy. You hop in, you don't you don't hold it for too long. You get your gains, give it what it takes you. I'm sorry, take whatever the market gives you, and 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 run off like a bandit, and get ready to set up for your next position. The market has pretty much outlined the positions or the grid for you and lets you know that it doesn't come down past the six cents area. It runs from six cents and it runs from eight cents. So right from that you have, I don't know how it's actually calculated as far as like pips or whatever, but um, we can just tell you how much, whatever that is. So I don't know, 20% of your account, I don't know, 159,000 I don't even know is that a million I don't even know so um, I think you know that is definitely looks good to me it looks like a good move to me I don't know Ty do you concur uh, 
Nineteen <laughs> percent. That's a decent move. Yeah, absolutely. That can make some good money or lose some good money depending on what side you're on. Absolutely. So we don't know how it's calculated just yet. It's just still pretty new. So, um, yeah. So that's pretty much our thoughts right now. So I think the buyers are still in control. Um, I think if we can get it to come as close as to the uh to the low sixes as possible. We want to get like low sixes, six three, six two, six five. Uh, the highest maybe is maybe six. Actually, I actually seen on the thing it actually came down to like five, but for some reason I seen that like on Robinhood or something it came down to like five uh, five cents or something like that. So I don't know if that's I can't even see it here. So if it does, if it hit five cents. Um, five eight. I'm I'm saying probably like for high fives, like five nine. It couldn't win any for lower than five nine. So, um, if we can get like any of the sixes, high fives, that's all in for a buy. Once it gets to an eight, take your profits and go. So, we're all in for the buy. Well, actually, let's happen to let's go to the five minute really quickly, and see how high and how low prices are. So for the most part, um, if we can get to come back down and tap for our buy area. I think, um, you know, after we actually would need more than that. But if we can get it to start make higher highs, I feel like we could actually get this to take it all the way back up. So if, like Tiberius said, we can get it to break this little purple zone right here. I think we can go ahead and take it back up to eight cents and just call it. So um, we're all in for the buy side. Yep. All right. So this is the in and out. Get your money and call it. So let's look at Bitcoin. So it's been some real big hype around Bitcoin because where are my indicators? Oh, it came all the way out of my indicators? Oh. Yeah, it came all the way out of my indicators, all the way to the top up there. Wow. So uh, I don't know if anyone has heard, but Apple is actually thinking about purchasing like $150 billion. Let me get the number right because I actually took a picture of that, Jim. Where is it? Oh, they're actually thinking about purchasing forty billion dollars worth of cryptocurrency Bitcoin. So that is a lot of money. So with that just talk even happening, I feel like we can definitely get could get Bitcoin to continue back up. It's been going up ever since uh um the break of this high over here. But I think something happened with Bitcoin before. Something was going on with Bitcoin. I forgot what it was right now, but it Ever since it Elon this Musk. High up here, Elon Musk, right? So yeah, yep. like he's actually been really moving the cryptocurrency world. He has been bringing attention to it, and I think it's actually something that you know a small trader can try to hop in and try to you know try to ride the train, you know. So I feel like uh, this actually has you know no potential where it could possibly go, but it can go up really high. So I think for the most part, right now, since it's making such high highs right now. We never want to just hop in for the buy at the highest high. If anything, you want to hop in for a sell and kind of just wait for it to. Uh, me personally, I always wait for the, the the moving average to get broken. But anytime it's a high high like that, I would just go ahead and just hop in for a sell because it never just goes straight up. So for me, um, since what it does, it goes up, retests its last high areas. So. Let's actually hide this really quick. So we would actually be looking for it to come back down to this low where it lines up with this high before we can get markets to go back up again. So for the buyers right now, I think we want to definitely be a little bit patient and let the sellers bring the market down to our 44 area. So I think anywhere between the 43 and 44,000 level would be a prime area to hop in for a buyer. Sellers, I just feel like with so much um, attention behind Bitcoin, I don't think that you can be able to hop in for the market and really get good gains. I mean, you'll be able to possibly scalp the market for a little bit, but you'll definitely be doing more damage than you are doing good. So, um, yeah, it's just been going up so much. It's like, Yeah, with that wick that just formed up here, let's go to the, actually the higher time frame and see what's going on.
So with this wick alone, it definitely just broke this high here. It lets you know it's in straight, straight up mode. But like I said, the higher it goes, the bigger the retracement. Like it possibly may not come all the way back down, but trust me, the, the retracement could possibly hurt if you think that you can ride the retracement out and kind of wait for it to correct itself. Mm. You could definitely possibly blow your account that way. Um, let's go down to the weekly. Um, so pretty much it came to this high area here, kind of came back to this last high area down here, which it actually did to the T, and then it shot back up again. So I think, yeah, if we can get it to come back down to these lows areas, let me hide, hide this. Delete some of it. I hate when I do this. Wait. You know they got the know, new the new feature? Huh? You know they got the new feature, right? Oh yeah, I could have just deleted one, right? Yeah. It's cool. I just wanna just kinda highlight these high zones. And I think since uh, Bitcoin has been going up just for the just as much as it went up today, I feel like maybe for the next couple of days or maybe for the rest of the week, it possibly could just be retracing and just coming back down. So um, just be very careful on that side as well. So let's uh, bring it down to the daily. Let me throw the Fibonacci on the... Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I think um, for sure uh, the, the buyers, we definitely got to be sit very 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 tight let's have a couple um before we decide to hop in um so yeah i think since the big up move that just happened and it never came back up to the forty-eight thousand, it's just been making lower lows and lower highs um i think we should the buyers we got to sit back sellers is probably going to take over the market for now um, enough of my rambling type areas. Tell me what you think, boss. Well, one thing I think is I'm thinking regret. I'm mad I wasn't in Bitcoin because it's like me too. Once you see huge moves like that to the upside, our emotion tells us hop in because it's going higher. But from what I've learned in the market, whenever you have a huge move like that, and it kind of lines up with the theory of a flag, is that prices have one huge move up on the pole. And then they kind of just retrace for a minute and let the buyers kind of reset and get their feet back underneath of them before they make the next up move. And that's kind of uh, the scenario and the phase that we're in right now. So, of course, like we always tell you guys, we never want to buy at the highest prices. The highest price that was ever made, the new all time high is, uh, I want to say, a little bit above forty eight thousand. Right now we're at forty six. We're only two thousand below that. It's a little bit too close for comfort to be going long right now if you do it's going to be a really risky move the trend is strong so maybe bitcoin will validate you for taking that trade but like, i would say like eight times out of ten you got you probably gonna take a loss on that so overall we want to wait and be more patient for lower prices we want to buy low and sell high so i think the zone that we have right here at forty two thousand is actually fantastic if we can get prices to come back to that level that will actually line up perfectly with the 65 moving average, which is another dynamic support level that we can rely on to go long and uptrends. So and also it'll bring it right back to where the flag kind of had its first level of resistance. So when the flag popped up, that first pullback came down to that level, which is not too far away from the zone or the moving average. So if prices can come back to that area, that could potentially be the perfect storm for us. And I think if prices get to that area, 
and they break through, they're definitely coming back to the bottom of the zone, which would actually be a reasonable spot as well, because if you follow it over there to the 29th and go straight up, it lines up with a previous high. So if prices came down to that point right there, that would actually be a good thing for us, too. So we can kind of take the lessons that we learned from the, the Dow Jones, the U.S. 30 earlier when I was saying how it was really volatile. Well, guess what? So is Bitcoin. You could even say more so than the Dow Jones because Bitcoin is crazy. It moves up and down like like nothing I've ever seen. So we, we couldn't be I wouldn't be surprised if we see prices come back down to the bottom of the zone. Best case scenario, top of the zone. But since that's the obvious level, I'm going to have to kind of put my sights on the bottom of the zone. Buy as low as I can and take it back up to about forty eight thousand and call it a day. Or for everybody else out there, I know a lot of people like the HODL with Bitcoin. So if you want to hold it like that, I couldn't advise you not to because we've been seeing Bitcoin gain more and more traction. D just told you how Apple was planning to buy a huge stake in it. Elon Musk, his company Tesla has stated that they're about to start doing business in Bitcoin as well. You also have a lot of people around the country that are trying to get into this. All of these big banks like Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, you think they just going to sit around and let everybody else make money in the markets and they're not going to have a part of it? Eventually, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Eventually, all of the institutional money will say, OK, it's too much money in Bitcoin for us not to be over there. And once they start coming into the market, if they're not already in the market, once they start coming over here, we'll get a lot more increases in the price and increases in volatility as well. And that should that should bode well for us as long traders who are looking to make some some quick cash on Bitcoin. So overall, let's wait for lower prices. Let's be patient that uh, 38000 level. That's my baby right there. If it can come down to it, I would love it. Go along, go long at that level and we should be good. All right. All right. So, you know, Bitcoin and actually around in my uh, state and city, there's actually a uh, Bitcoin ATMs popping up in my city. So mm -hmm. trust me, they're not just creating those and putting those in places for no reason. I'm not sure is anybody familiar with them. They're literally like Bitcoin ATMs. And I think they're allowed you to allow you. And I think we're even allowed to even make purchases with Bitcoin. So I think that shows you how far bitcoin is even beginning to go and i even said this you know i feel like you know you know big up to you know joe biden trying to put harriet tubman or whoever on the 20 dollar bill but you know i just feel like now they can go ahead and just possibly just go ahead and keep it now like unless they're going to name bitcoin rename bitcoin or something something where we're where we're heading like they can 